If you are like most Americans, you will spend about $100 this year on Valentine's Day. Gifts, candies, and cards. And with less than two weeks to select a present, we have some ways for you to maximize your purchases. For more, we're joined by Kelly Grant, the senior consumer reporter for SmartMoney.com. When I was looking at your talking points, I thought mm -hmm. about a song by uh, Aretha Franklin called Think. And you say before you even spend a dime, think about whether the gift is appropriate. Exactly. Valentine's Day is a really stressful shopping holiday for most people just because the gift that we send, it's really send, it's sending a message about the status of your relationship. If you just think about how off-putting it might be to get fancy jewelry from someone you considered a casual date or on the other extreme, something like a houseplant from your significant other, um, you know, there, there really can be some consequences here. So sit down and have a frank conversation with your significant other and talk about what you both expect. That way you're not going to be less stressed out and you're not going to overspend. I don't know about you, but for men, jewelry from a casual date might be a nice idea. Um, next point is buy your own. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just a thought. True. If you want to have something, you know, I just met you tonight. No, just kidding. Um, next point. Next buy one. early. <laughs> Definitely you want to buy early when it comes to Valentine's Day presents. Stores know that if you're buying uh, the traditional gifts like the red roses or the chocolate just a day or two before Valentine's Day, you're probably stressed out enough that you're not going to quibble over the price and they have no incentive to give you a discount. So we're seeing a lot of sales that are, are ending right about this week. So really, um, you know, plan ahead and buy now and don't wait until the last minute. Trim the bouquet. That's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to buy the dozen long stemmed red roses, you can probably expect to spend about $100. So very, very pricey, uh, but there are some easy ways to cut that cost down. If you want to go for something that's a little less obvious, then go for sort of the, the normal stemmed red roses instead of the long stemmed ones. You'll save usually about 15% doing that. And then if you want to save a little bit more um, and you think your significant other, other, other is not going to mind, go for something that isn't a red rose. Uh, white, uh, yellow, pink, and even purple are going to save you about 30%. And beware of chocolate. Mm -hmm. Chocolate, well, it's a great idea, but you want to watch the expiration dates specifically ah, okay. because if you're buying really fancy chocolate, it's made with real cream and it doesn't have a lot of preservatives like the stuff you would get um, sort of on the shelf at the drugstore. So you don't want to give your significant another rotten chocolate. No, of um, course so not. So certainly no. look at the, um, the shelf life and the storage instructions before you buy something. And that may be something that you want to wait maybe until a couple days before Valentine's Day to do. And your final point, 180 degrees from think first, is consider mm -hmm. yellow gold. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're looking at, at fine jewelry, uh, certainly the carat of the, of the jewelry is going to be um, the major indicator of price. The higher the carat, the more gold it has in it and the more expensive it's going to be. And white jewelry tends to have silver or other sorts of expensive materials in it, so it's going to be a little bit pricier than a yellow gold item would be. Well, thank you very much for those tips, and we will uh, carry them with us to our shopping task for Valentine's Day. Thank you. Kelly Grant from SmartMoney.com.